When biodiesel was first introduced in the United States, one of the major advantages was that it did not have that almost unbearable smell and black smoke produced by petroleum diesel fuel. Biodiesel provided substantially lower emissions of particulate matter, carbon monoxide, and unburned hydrocarbons. Oxides of nitrogen emissions were slightly increased, but the amount of increase for blends was usually small enough that it could not be accurately measured. Starting in 2007, EPA regulations dramatically lowered the allowable levels of exhaust pollutants for diesel engines, so biodiesel's reduced emissions are mentioned much less often. Biodiesel still has a beneficial effect on older engines, but these engines represent a constantly shrinking portion of the transportation fleet. Its favorable effect on life cycle greenhouse gas emissions is still emphasized as one of its advantages, but improvements to modern diesel engines have made the effect of the fuel on emissions, like particulate matter, less important. During the diesel fuel combustion process, small amounts of fuel carbon will remain as carbon monoxide, unburned hydrocarbon, and particulate matter. Nitrogen from the air also combines with oxygen to form nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide, which are known as oxides of nitrogen, or NOx. The biggest challenge for engine manufacturers was that designs to reduce particulate emissions tend to increase NOx and vice versa. There are two basic strategies used to eliminate diesel particulate emissions. In-cylinder controls, which are intended to minimize the amount of particulate released from the cylinder, and after treatment, which operates on the particulate after it leaves the engine cylinder but before it is released to the environment. Powerful onboard computers used with diesel engines have allowed new flexibility in programming the injection event. These systems allow multiple fuel injections within a single engine cycle, which reduces NOx production, engine noise, and vibration. Variable geometry turbochargers have been developed to improve the engine's air supply to keep particulate emissions low, and lower engine intake air temperatures are used to reduce both NOx and particulate emissions. After EPA regulations required a significant reduction in particulate and NOx, emissions could no longer be met with in-cylinder controls and devices known as after-treatment were needed. For NOx control, most manufacturers use Selective Catalytic Reduction, SCR, which requires periodically refilling a tank with diesel emission fluid, or DEF. For particulate control, Manufacturers had to start using diesel particulate filters, or DPFs, that are commonly made of porous ceramics. These filters require a periodic burn-off of the collected particulates so that the filter does not plug up. Modern diesel engines use a combination of in-cylinder controls and after-treatment to reduce emissions to extremely low levels. This does not change the benefit from biodiesel, since the reduction in life cycle greenhouse gases for biodiesel is over 80% compared with conventional diesel fuel, and continues to improve each year. This is a major incentive for biodiesel use. Learn more at biodieseleducation.org.